And I think it's going to be interesting. I think um, the, the slight question mark of England is the change of coach. They've, they've, they've changed coach and their former England coach has gone to Scotland. So I think that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But I think they've generally got a fairly settled side who've been together for a while. I don't, I confess I don't know much about the Australian team, but they would probably be second for me because Australia and anything, they'll, <laughs> they'll still manage to find some, yeah, some talented people. But I, I think in, if, if you had to ask me, um, we, you know, where, where have we got most chance of actually winning a World Cup on home soil? I think that's probably it. Um, Sarah, you've gone for England as well. You know, what what we do know about the wheelchair game is is we see the people who have been involved in the England setup over recent years. You've got James Simpson, who's one of the ambassadors for the tournament, for example. So we do get a bit of insight, don't we, from some of the interviews that James has done kind of into the England setup. Yeah, I think I'm I'm really excited about it. Um, I mean, like when I was talking to Trevor the other day, you know, saying about how actually to how radical it is to have all three World Cups being played at the same time. But um, I love watching the wheelchair rugby. It was something that I've only recently watched, and I've only been watching it on YouTube and things. But it's incredible. Um, so I'm quite excited. Yeah, David, you've gone patriotic as well tip, tipping England to win yeah uh, not not for any uh, with any huge knowledge Mark but um, I know that the, the England uh, wheelchair uh, squad have done well um, before so and I, it's again it's it's not something I've watched it um, watched it on, um, on on YouTube but I haven't watched a live game and it's uh, something I Want to put right um, at the, uh, at the, the, the upcoming tournament? I'd, uh, I'm going to try and make my way down to the uh, to the copper box to, to, to pick a game. Hopefully, be able to get an England ticket. Yeah. So the other games are in Sheffield, aren't they? And then the final is being played in Liverpool the, the night before the men's and women's final are in Manchester. Um, is the current plan? Obviously, that would be a good night out. Um, so I've got England as well, and. I do think it's between England and France because these things t- have tended to be between England and and France in the time that I've been following following this along. Um, I get what Tim said about the change of coach, but I actually think the kind of progress being made in Scotland and Wales, whilst those teams are markedly, I feel, behind the England side, it actually potentially gives England an opportunity, hopefully, to get some sort of competitive action in, in place before the tournament that I'm not sure... Australia and France will quite get to the same um, degree on. So I think England could go in this strengthened by some of the changes in the structures of of the sides and who, who's coaching the sides, because I think the, the resources put into it will help England. So definitely confident of an England win in at least one of the three World Cups, but hopefully all three. OK, so that's the... That's the votes out of, uh, you know, that we've all had. Thanks for everyone for casting their votes and even to the people who voted for Greece and things like that because it's, it's given us more to talk about, that's for certain, um, <laughs> even if it has weirdly skewed the percentages somewhere, um, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, thanks for everyone who's voted and we hope we haven't upset too many people with our views of what's going to happen. Probably most of them were predictable. We're now going to move into a team-by-team um, uh, run-through of the sides uh, ahead of the season um so uh, we're definitely going to cause some upset and offense there so we'll uh, we'll tell you we'll run through that after this quick musical interlude <laughs> Okay, so it's team by team time. And what that means is um, it's trigger warning time because obviously not all of you will be happy with where we place your team in this list. Um, So, you know, please don't take it personally. Please remember that we have to put everyone somewhere um, for the fun of the predictions. And, um, hey, it just gives you a chance to tell us come October that we were talking out of our backsides. But we're going to... We're going to go through with the placings as you guys, the listeners who voted, 
place these teams um, when we did when we averaged out all of the places that that they were picked and we're going to start with the team that was voted to finish in 12th place which was the Lee Centurions. Now I'm going to quickly run through all of the transfers. We're not going to talk about the four two-week loan signings because, you know, what's the point? Um, but their, their gains at Lee are Blake Wallace, Jamie Ellis, Matty G, Ryan Brearley, Nathan, Nathaniel Petteru, Adam Sidlow, Joe Miller, Matty Russell, Ben Flower, Craig Mullen, Lewis Tierney, James Bell, Tyro McCarthy and Brendan Elliott. Um, and their losses are Ben Reynolds, Sam Brooks, Martin Ridgard, Liam Forsyth, Callum Field, Ryan Inns, Danny Addy, and Greg McNally. Um, obviously, last season, this side were in the championship. They went out in the fifth round of the cup. Uh, so, you know, there wasn't much to talk about for 2020 from from Lee, um, who are now the combined Hull KR slash Toronto Wolfpack uh, as we go into <laughs> the 2021 season. And as we know, about Hull KR and Toronto Wolfpack. They were the sides that were bottom of the table pre-lockdown and then post-lockdown in the Super League. Not sure if that is why people have put them in 12th place, but um, Alan, David, myself and Sarah have all put them in 12th place, which means the person I'm going to get to talk about, Lee Centurions, is Tim, because you put them in 11th. Yeah, I think they've they've got a little bit of experience in there. They've got a bit of a bit of oomph, a bit of nastiness about them and i just think they might be able to get a few wins especially when playing sort of higher up teams that are perhaps taking them a bit lightly that might just be enough for them to creep ahead kr fair enough S- sarah you've, you've got them in 12 which i guess would have been a painful thought because you would have wanted to find a way to put whole kr 12 so is it is it the issue, is the issue with Lee the sort of quality of strength and depth that they maybe lack compared to other sides? Yeah, well, I think it's it's going to be tough for them coming up. You know, they only found out relatively recently, didn't they? Um, you know, they've they have made some really good signings. It's just um, it's that step up, isn't it? And whether they can um, sustain it, I. I think, like Tim said, that the, you know they will pick up wins probably, um, but is it enough wins that they're going to pick up? I don't know. And I just felt for me that they were probably the most likely to finish bottom. It depends how much Uncle Degsy wants to dig into his pockets come the uh, second half of the season if they can turn things around. Uh, is is the way for them to avoid 12th place for me? So so we shall see. Um, 11th place the team uh, voted in 11th sorry, place I was, just, I was just going to say Mark sorry that uh, they actually played pretty well against us well they uh, beat you um, well, they did they played very, pretty well against us last week I mean they only played our kids in the second half really but but nevertheless they did they did play uh, pretty well I think I think they might start well particularly given who they've got in the first round um, and, uh, yeah, depleted Wigan side. That I'd have no idea what we're going to be playing on the wings. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but uh, they, they they defended pretty well, and I thought they uh, they gave a good account of themselves last week. So I think they'll start okay, but I do, I do think they might they, they might end up fading. Um, the the side to get the vote for eleventh place was Wakefield. Trinity, um, their gains is only Mason Lino, so I think that suggests that their the the floor for their talent is has improved. I'm not sure Gee. if it improves the the ceiling. Um, their losses are Danny oh. Bruff, Danny Kerman, Ryan Atkins, Craig. Can you tell I prepared that joke? Craig Kopchak, Tony Chico, <laughs> Romain Navarrete, Ben Jones Bishop, and Titus Guazzi. So quite a quite a big loss that they were tenth in Super League last year. That was second bottom. Uh, came out in the sixth round of the Challenge Cup, so that means they did nothing there. Alan, we had one fan view in from a Wakefield fan. Do you want to give us that first, please? Yep, so Wakey White says, hoping Wakey can at least flirt with the playoffs until fairly near the end of the season. In the end, though, I expect us to have a fairly unremarkable season, maybe get to a semi in the Challenge Cup. I think that's uh, I think that's about as positive as you could ever hope to be with um, looking at those gains and losses, I would have thought. Well, you're the person who picked them where the where the main voters picked them to finish, and that's 11th place. So, um, yeah, you 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 feel it's going to be a struggle then for Wakey this year. 
Well, we'll see, they struggled early on, didn't they? And then they found a little bit of form, um, kind of, you know, when um, it was all a bit kind of academic, really. <laughs> they were, uh, they were, they were kind of. I wouldn't call the Daily teams. Star academic. <laughs> because <laughs> it was it did feel like it was the daily stars piece that that turned their season around <laughs> yeah well you know but yeah i mean in terms of you know um but you know if you just look at the gains and losses they've you know they've just lost a lot of bodies haven't they um so yeah for me they're just they'll just be better than Lee, who who will be bang average themselves. Not none of us. What? So they're going to finish sixth or seventh? Um, none of us had well, them. No, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm being polite. <laughs> none of them. None of us had them finishing outside of the bottom four. David, you had them in the best place of any of us nine. So a little bit more optimism, or is it just more pessimism yeah, about the rest? I, yeah, well, possibly a bit, a little bit of both. Um, I, I I found it quite difficult to pick between some of the some of the sides i have to i have to say i didn't realize quite so many experienced players had left the club but nevertheless it, a lot of those guys um didn't you know, danny kerman decide um and danny bruff aside did didn't play week in week out last year for wakefield and i still really quite like the the back line uh, and I and I think I think they've got a good coaching staff there. I, clearly, the squad's going to be a bit thin, but if they can keep fit, then I think they'll they'll I think they'll finish out of the bottom two anyway. Um, okay, the side that finishing out of the bottom two as the as the predictions have gone is is Hull KR, who the who the fans have voted into tenth place. Um, I must admit, I think this was from some rogue votes putting them in first place, skewing the average. But, <laughs> but be that as it may, um, there's been a bit of squad turnover at Rovers. So Albert Vette, Ryan Hall, Corbin Sims, Brad Takarangi, Louis Johnson, and Muiz, Muiz Mustafa have all come in. So lots of forwards there, including Ryan Hall. Um, lots the losses though were uh, big in number and some big in presence as well. Mitch Garbert, Jamie Ellis, Ryan Briley, Matty G, Nathaniel Petteru, Dan Murray, Will Oakes, Harvey Levette, Robbie Mulhern, Wella Haraki and Nick Rosevorn were the, were the uh, exits. Okay, our big squad turnover again for the Robins. We had a couple of fan views in. Uh, Tim, do you want to read through your fellow Rovers fan reviews before we talk about your prediction? Yeah, uh, so Adam Everett, uh, welcome to Adam. He says, uh, gradual progression, win more games than we lose, finish ninth or above. And Tom Andrews... Oh, hold says, on, hold on, Adam. You're going to win more games than you lose, but only finish ninth or above. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom Andrews says, more injuries, regretting not buying a proven quality half, clean sweep over Hull FC, Ben Crooks continues his rise to greatness. But that rise for you sees them finish last again, Tim. So why, why the pessimism about your own team? I just think there's been so much chopping and changing. I don't know who the best 13 is. I can't see Tony Smith lasting past July. I just think it's uh, there's so much going on. I think it'll be too much too much change, too much you know, in the mix. And I think it's a couple of still a couple of injuries away in that side from doom and disaster. I just I can't see where the wins are going to come from in any sort of consistent basis. Sarah, you're confident this year of having bragging rights over the uh, the boys from across the river. Um, I think so. Yeah, I, it's it's very difficult, isn't it? Because um, you know, with with that amount of squad turnover, it's very difficult to know what anything what it's going to look like. Um, but there's nobody there that particularly makes me think, "Wow, they're amazing." So now, uh, now you yeah, don't I've think that, Sarah, that. but Alan, Alan's thinking like Adam Everett is. He's got them finishing seventh. Explain yourself. Show you're working out. 
<laughs> I don't think I can. I really can't. <laughs> um, um, 